Good morning. Let's start a lecture. And uh, <coughs> so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to finish a little concept from lecture four, and then we'll get on to the new concept, uh, lecture five, so which is closed loop pulse transfer function, and then we'll talk about uh, discrete equivalence. Okay. Yeah. So so far we have finished is uh, open loop pulse transfer function. Um, there is a concept which is called DC gain. Okay. So if you do a control system, as a control engineer, uh, one of the concept or one of the specification gen generally you you're going to be interested is this so-called DC gain. And what a DC gain means basically means it's it's uh, when input is unit step. Okay, so when input is unit step, the steady state okay, value of the output okay, is the DC gain. Okay, it's DC gain. So basically, uh, in you, when you learn a continuous system, uh, one of the response that often uh, that we're interested in is so-called step response, right? Yeah, step response basically is a response when input is unit step signal. And if your unit step input, let's say it's one here, and your output, okay, is a step response, and the step response maybe. <coughs> behaves like this, right? Yeah. So then this dash value right here and this is the steady state value. Okay, that's steady state value. So the steady state value, essentially the steady state value ratio, this value over one, and that's essentially the DC gain. Okay? Yeah, it's DC gain. So the gain is a concept of a system you know, you, you do amplifier. Amplifier has a gain, right? Yeah, you put in a one, you know, amplifier is 100, and then it's going to amplify by 100 times, right? That's a gain. So, but for the control system, uh, you don't, you not necessary you, you want it to amplify 100 times. Maybe you just, what you want is, you just want to follow the reference, right? Yeah. So, in other words, what you really want is, you want the steady state here to be the same as the input here, right? If they're not the same, then the difference is what we call what? The, yes, the steady state error, right? So this is this error here is called steady state error. So <coughs> so the steady state error <coughs> essentially can be um, you can tell that from the value of DC gain, right? If the DC gain is not one, then there is the steady state error. If DC gain is one, then there's no steady state error, right? So that's the, that's the usage of DC gain here. Okay. So how do we find the DC gain? It's actually quite easy, right? <coughs> so for continuous system, okay, for continuous system, according to the definition, the, the input is unit step input, and unit step input the Laplace transform is 1 over s. So if you give that to a plant or a system, okay, then you have the outputs, right? <coughs> so what we really want, <coughs> according to this one here, we want is the steady state value of the output here. Right? Steady state value. And what is the output here? Output is 1 over s and gp as here. That's the output. So the steady state value can be obtained by using the final, uh, the final value theorem. Okay, for uh, uh, for this one here. So basically, what 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 uh, what that give us the DC gain? That's essentially the limit. Okay, when s go to zero, <coughs> one over s GPS here. Okay, yeah, GPS. Okay. Sorry, I'm 
there's a multiply by s here, right? Final state value, final state value, there's s here. Multiply by s. So this s cancel this s it here. And uh, right, that's this one here. So this basically means you set s equal to 0. Okay? And see uh, what the value is, right? Okay. So that's DC gain, all right? And uh, let's take a look at discrete ones. And this is what we're really interested. So for discrete system, <coughs> the drawing is slightly different. So your input is a, a unit step input, and then it'll be passing through the uh, uh, input sampler. Okay. So generally, we will have a zero order hold, and then game into the plant. Okay, GP of S, and that'll be the output here, right? Be the output. Okay, yeah. So we have derived the transfer function for the zero to hold, and the, the zero to hold is one minus e negative T S over S, right? That's the uh, transfer function for the zero to hold block. So the uh, DC gain in this particular case. This again in this particular case basically so it's a steady state value. Hmm. It's not writing anymore. What's going on here? There we go. So that's a steady state value of the output here, right? Stays the output. Okay. Yeah. And in other words, <coughs> according to the final <coughs> value theorem, okay, it's a z go to one, the okay, one minus z to negative one c z, okay, c z. Right. So in this particular case. Uh, for C Z, right, using the open loop pulse transfer function, the C Z basically it's uh, the uh, uh, disc the unit step input multiplied by the discretized block of these two together, right? So you, if you have a unit step input here, then the 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 digital ones here is what Z over Z minus one, right? This is U of K, okay? The U of K, and these two together, okay? These two together, okay? Has a has has the uh, let's say we call that a G of uh, Z, okay? Let's say call we call it G of Z, okay? So then <coughs> C of Z will be G of Z multiplied by Z over Z minus one, right? And minus one. Okay. So G of Z, if you have the plan here. And you have this one here. You know, we in the, in the previous lecture we have derived um, a general formula for this, right? So then, this one here you can cancel many terms. This one here is z minus one over z. So you really can cancel this term here. So that basically end up with g of z here. So that equivalent to c g of one, right? G of one. Okay. Yeah. So this is the DC again for discrete system, right? Discrete system. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, th this is used for maybe basically is when you have uh, a control system designed, okay, and then when you have the plan, you have everything, you have to uh, determine your controller. So the first step, okay, when you design actually is maybe you wanted to make sure your DC gain is one. Okay, so if you choose your controller again, and you need to choose your controller again so that the DC gain is one here. If you recall that in one of in the in example in the previous class in example, um, let me see, huh? 
you have your lecture notes, I don't have to see this one here. Example number four, number four, this is number four, yeah, this example here. Right, so we have the plan here, we have the controller, and in the end, we derived that our pulse trans function is this one here, right? The pulse trans function is, uh, is this, okay? Yeah. And E of Z is the input, okay? E of Z is the input. So this is the pulse trans function. So then the output will be simply this one multiplied by E of Z, right? The output is this trans function multiplied by E of Z. So if you look at this one here, and uh, we did some simulation here, and simulation shows that uh, the response goes to 1, okay, at a steady state, so which basically means this DC gain should be 1, right? DC gain is 1. So you can you can verify that, okay, using, uh, this is actually what happens here, the verification of DC gain here, that's equal to 1, right? Yeah, so verifying DC gain is essentially equivalent to uh, looking at this uh, steady state value of the output, okay? Yeah. The uh, final state, final uh, value theorem, okay, uh, you might actually note here I use y minus z to the power negative 1, okay. In some textbook, uh, instead of y minus z to the power negative 1, they use z minus 1 here, okay, in some textbook. So it's equivalent, okay, equivalent. Okay, so any questions on this again? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's quite simple. Um, just use the final value theorem and uh, check uh, what the value is. If it says 1, then you're good, right? You have no steady stare. If it's not 1, then there, there will be some steady error, steady state error for sure. Okay, so now let's look at uh, the next topic here. Uh, the uh, pulse trans function for closed loop system. So, so let's draw a closed loop one here first, right? So let's see what do we mean by closed loop. Okay, this is a closed loop one, and uh, let's uh, put this reference input as this. Okay. And this is basically a summation junction at here. And what comes out of the junction is error. The error is uh, sampled, okay? And then fit it to a block over here, okay? So this is an impulse sampler. And what comes out of the input or after the impulse sampler is always a start signal. And the output okay, is y of s, right? Yeah. And so that's a closed loop system, right? Yeah, and what we're interested in, we're interested in the pulse trans function of the system. So we're interested in y of z over r of z, right? Yeah. So for this kind of system, right, you know, when you look at the drawing, uh, one of the things is, uh, you often probably would wonder is, uh, why do we always have uh, the uh, uh, s things here and uh, z all, you know, all messed up, right? So you have a sampler here, you're supposed to get a sequence, and you also have this S block here, which represents a continuous system here. So this kind of system in general, what we call is sample data system, right? Sample data system. Sample data system is a system that has both the component of the discrete and the component of the continuous uh, there. Right? So that's called sample data system. So actually, you know, every digital control system is a sample data system because Ultimately, your digital control signal is going to be fitted to what? You're going to be fitted to uh, to uh, to the continuous plant, right? So you always have a continuous plant in the system there. Okay? Yeah. So so let's take a look at this uh, this closed loop trans function here. Uh, before we take the closed loop trans function, let's see if I don't have a sampler here. Okay? If I don't have a sampler, if there's no sampler. Okay? So what is the closed loop trans function? Basically, that's a Laplace trans function, right? So what will be the closed loop trans function? Y of s over r of s, right? So that that you should remember that when you do have you have a, a branch here, g of s, your branch here, h of s. So the trans function for that is going to be 
that's right. Okay, yeah, that's the uh, uh, basic continuous system. Okay, yeah, I'll show you a tip uh, later on to sh to uh, derive pulse trans functions, uh, pulse trans function for uh, for this based on the uh, continuous one. So <coughs> if I uh, have the sampler now, so things are uh, slight to change now. So let's do what uh, what we do is let if you recall that when we derive the pulse trans function for open loop, so we Ultimately, what we did is we first end up at okay, uh, y star over r r star, right? We first end up this. Then what we see is we can just uh, signify basically change the s to uh, to uh, one over t and ln z. So that'll give us this y of z over r of z, right? Yeah. So that's how we are going to try to do this step. This this step here. Uh, very similar to the way to derive this one here, what you do is you or you, you can start from the location of this junction here, right? So the location of the junction represents E of S, and that's R of S minus this signal over here, right? This signal here. And this signal here equal to what? Equal to this Y of S by H of S. So that equal to Okay. Yeah. With our sampler, yeah. shouldn't your bottom be GHOS? GHOS? You talk about the case of no sampler. Right? Yeah, basically uh, the continuous system is to just, just connect here. Hmm? Yeah. That makes sense, yeah? What, what do you mean by GHOS? Um, if I read in your notes. Oh, you. Oh, I see. Yeah, not yet. Not not there yet. Yeah, you're 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 trying to combine the two together, huh? Are you? Yeah, that's what happens when you have, when you have no sample effect. No, 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 no. That that's a different situation. Uh, the, that that. Uh, um, we'll, we'll we'll talk about this just shortly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Th but this no sample case. What I'm saying here is just 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 con pure continuous system, right? Yeah. Pure continuous system. Okay, so here is the E, and uh, <coughs> output Y is this E star mod multiplied by G of S. Okay, it's e, this E star multiplied by G of S, right? Yeah. Okay, so then I can uh, uh, plug this this Y of S into here, right? Into here. So then I get what? I will get E of S equal to R of S minus H of S and then G of S, let's say E star of S, right? Yeah, E star of S. Okay. So that's the E here. Okay, that's E here. So ultimately what we what we want is we want, as I said, we want this everything in terms of star here, right? Y star R star here, right? Y star R star. So, and uh, then what we do is let's take right. Let's take this. Uh, what's going on here? Yeah. So let's uh, take the start Laplace transform of this of this expression here. So you take start Laplace transform of both sides. Okay, of both sides. So here's a mix of. Uh, regular one and star one. So now let's take star Laplace transform of this. And uh, the star Laplace of this, just star of this. And star of this, there's two components. So you take Lapl star Laplace separately. And the first one is just R star, right? R star. Now second one here, yeah, you gotta be careful now, okay? So when you when you say, oh, you know, star Laplace transform, that's what we that's what we mean by star Laplace transform. So what's inside here? Let's say maybe you have a G1, G2, or G3, right? You have a G1, G2, G3. And this doesn't mean this is gonna be G1 star, a G2 star, and G3 uh, star here, okay? Yeah, that's necessarily a mean of this one here. Okay. Yeah. So what you need to do is, okay, you need to uh, in this particular case, the, this is this and star one. So you need to combine these two together first. Okay, combine these two together into one s function. So that's going to be g h of s, right? Combine these two together. 
then gh of s e star okay and then that gives you this star here e star star operation again so still star one here okay yeah so that's the results of the start Laplace transform of this one okay yeah so now you got two e star on both sides so take out the common factor and end up with yeah you end up with this right end up with this okay yeah so that's e star here all right that's e star See, uh, in, uh, 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 Conan, see, you see this now you, you have this GH together, right? Yeah. So now we substitute this one back to here, right? Back to here. But before you do this uh, substitution from here back over here, so for this one here, you do the same thing. You can take another start Laplace transform of this expression right here. So that gives you this Y star of S equal e star of s and g star of s and okay, g star of s yeah um, could you like uh, could you explain again like what mm. the difference is between like e h star of s and g of s times g h of s what is the difference between g h star of s or uh, or g of s times uh, h of s compared to like say g h star of h of s like is it is it the same? Um, all I'm saying is you're probably referring is see uh, here I multiply them together and then you take the start Laplace transform right? You you are you saying you you just g star of this multiplied by h star of this give you this? Is that what you're saying? Um, see I'm this is I'm just wondering what the, like the like you're basically making a discrete sort of transform to it? No, this is not discrete. This is the, the, the this is a star Laplace okay. transform oh, here. Okay, star Laplace. Yeah. Okay, I see. And you take it of that of that term. No, that's right. Yeah. This is not discrete and yeah. Actually the star S is still continuous thing. Yeah, still continuous thing. Right? So remember you remember what's a star one? Star one is everything is it's a, it's about it's the one that after this impulse sampler, right? Impulse sampler. You have this x of t here. What comes out of this one here? We call it x star of t. It's a, it's a sequence of impulses, right? Sequence of impulses. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I got like another question as well. So yeah. why is it that um, I'm not sure if you're, if you're already doing it, but if if, yeah. if we go back to that control mm -hmm. block diagram, yeah. Why is uh, do you sample that as well too? Like the errors, like sorry, the the output signal. Do you have a sampler of the output signal? Good point. Yeah. Yes, so the question is, do you sample this or not, right? So in other words, uh, you know, do you do this step here, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is, yes, you do. Suppose you do this, right? You do this, but you don't have to do this. So which basically means you don't, f you don't have to physically have to have a sampler at here. See, this is the output, right? What's the output? Output is the output of the plant. That makes it right? And and uh, what we're what we're, what we're trying to obtain is y star. So this is basically you you have the information here. You don't really have to have a physical sampler to obtain this one here. This is all soft. You can spread that by a software or by just uh, taking a soft sample of this continuous signal. You know what I'm saying, right? So this sampler here, it's not a sampler like this one here. This is a physical sampler here, and this one is what we call so you can call it a fictitious sampler at here, right? That doesn't have to physically exist over there. So let's say you have a, a sinusoidal output here, right? Now, do I need to apply um, a, a discrete uh, sampler, you know, to sample that one in order to obtain the disc, in order to obtain this pulse trans function? You don't have to, right? You have the sign of T, you know, you just use our software, you know, put the different T here, you, you know what it is, right? Yeah, you know what the values are. So this is basically a fictitious sampler here, okay? Okay, so ba back to the uh, star one. Maybe I should um, uh, illustrate a little more here. Uh, the the whole idea comes from a previous lecture. We had a um, we had a, let's see, I used a general block G 
and then multiply by let's say h star of s and then the star of uh, the star operation of this one give me g star h star okay g star h star so <coughs> this is the 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 thing that you you need to stick to the the, the principle okay or the rule okay this is the rule here so we, you generally what you do is you don't put the g h two things that are here to take the star. You have you all you, you gotta have a star one and a here. Okay? You gotta have a star one here. If you don't have if you don't have anything, let's say let's say you if you all you if you all you have is this. Okay, if all you have is this, and then you take the star, right? If you take the star Laplace transform. So you can't see this is G star H star. Right? So basically what this is that's G H star. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so back over here. Now I'm ready to derive my uh pulse trans function now. So plug in this one over here. So we end up with Y star of S over R star of S. Okay, that equal to what? G star minus uh, over C H star of S, right? Okay. So <coughs> all together, that's it, right? Everything is star now. Okay, everything is star. So there's no mix, no mixed, uh, no mixture here. So let's substitute S or just simply change the S to Z. So we end up with Y of Z over R of Z equal to G of Z over one plus okay, G H of Z. So that's the pulse trans function of the closed loop system here. Okay, closed loop. So this closed loop system is a sort of simplified closed loop system. Basically, uh, there's a block here, there's a block here. And maybe that block is uh, in series, it's two blocks in series, right? Who knows? Uh, maybe this block is two blocks and three blocks in series. Okay, yeah. So, <clears throat> but as long as you have a structure like this, and you should know that. Uh, you, next time you don't have to derive anymore, and you can know that the pulse trans function of this of that kind of structure is this over this. Okay, yeah, that's this. Thing. Okay, so <clears throat> another thing I wanted to point out is okay, yeah, uh, the pulse trans function it's not like a, a continuous one. Sometimes it doesn't exist. Okay, sometimes it exists. So the reason they exist. Okay, there's a tape at here. Okay, you, how do you tell whether pulse trans function exists or not? Okay, first of all, what do we mean by pulse trans function exists? And basically, if it exists, you can get a specific expression for y for input output here, right? That's what we mean by exist. If it doesn't exist, basically you cannot okay, obtain a uh, specific expression okay, for this ratio at here. That's what I mean by it doesn't exist. Okay, so the tape it here, okay. This PTF exists, okay, when there is an impulse sampler, okay, right after this. Uh, Junction box. Okay, right after the junction box. So if there is no such kind of impulse sampler right after the junction box, okay, uh, you actually don't have to, to derive this pulse <coughs> trans function. For example, right, if you have a, a closed loop system like this. So let's say you have a closed loop system like this. Okay? And uh, the the impulse sampler, it's not right after this impulse, this uh, junction box here. It's somewhere here, right? Yeah, and there's a block here. Now, if the question asks you is can you derive this y of z over r of z, right? So you actually don't have to spend any time to do that. You can try, but you won't be able to uh, obtain a specific uh, ratio uh, here. So you can get 
a ratio y of z equal to something. That's okay, right? You can get y of z equal to something. But you won't get okay to take out this ratio here. Okay? Yeah. So that not exist. Okay. Not exist. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, a simple example right here, right? Table stick simple example. Um, how about uh, let's say this g of s block here, right? How about this g of s block? Okay, well, let's let's take a look at this thing here. What what about this g of s block? The zero outer hold it here, and one over s plus one. Basically, this is a uh, uh, the example from the lecture four, the example number four, that's open loop one, right? This is basically the lecture number, f uh, example number four in lecture four. So now we close the loop. Okay, we close the loop here. Okay, so we close the loop. And if you do this, and what will be the uh, impulse, what will be the pulse transfer function for this closed loop system? Okay. Yeah. So there are two blocks here. So this two block is essentially uh, is the G of S block in the previous uh, derivation, right? And there's no H of S here, right? No H of S. So that the whole thing is actually quite simple. So what we need is we need this G of Z, right? We need this G of Z it's because because you look at this, the the final. Here, so what is this? You need this g of z, right? G of z, and that's the z transfer function of this g of s. Okay, so you need that. Okay, and we derived this way in the previous and in the previous lecture, and this is derived basically uh, as this one here. Okay, this is derived as this, and that's it. Then all you need is basically right this y of z over r of z. It's g of z over 1 plus g of z because there's no h of z. So plugging this over here, here, so simplify it, so you end up with you end up with this. Okay? Yeah. So that's the pulse trans function for this closed loop system. Okay. For the closed loop system. And uh, uh, if you want to uh, basically look at the responsive system now, you can plug in a different kind of response over here, uh, impulse response or step response, right? So you can take a look at the response, right? Yeah. But in short, uh, the response is determined by the closed loop pole, right? Location in the pole, as we're gonna, uh, I will talk about a little detail in future lectures. So you look at this system here, what's the pole of this system? The pole is the solution, right? Or the roots of the denominator. So the pole is, here is uh, negative one, plus 2 uh, to the power of e t, right? That's the pole here, okay? And t is a sampling time, okay? t is a sampling time, okay? So you can very easily verify that uh, this value, okay, is less than 1, uh, less than, yeah, less, uh, less than uh, or equal to 1, okay? So then um, essentially you have a, a a stable system, right? It's within a unit circle. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So any questions out of here? Yeah. So now I'll give, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a little um, a shortcut in terms of deriving this uh, closed loop pulse trans function system. All right? Yeah. So let me s let me give you a, s um, a, an example here. Maybe two examples, okay? Let's say I have a Closed loop like this. Okay, so let's say we have pulse transfer uh, a closed loop system in here and we wanted to derive the pulse trans function okay yeah so <coughs> suppose you have the same kind of impulse sampling sampler here right <coughs> 
Okay, so if uh, you want to follow the typical pro uh, process, pro uh, is what you do is right. You 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 do exactly what happens there. So anything out, out uh, after the same input sampler is the start one. So basically, you need to define yourself some symbols, right? Some symbols here. So let's say that's E star. I'm not sure what you're gonna define it here. Let's see. Maybe C S. And C star of S like this, right? Yeah. So that you you need to define this intermediate things here first, and then you go over each block here. For example, you say, okay, y uh, y of S equal to E star multiplied by H, and then C S equal to G one multiplied by Y of S, right? And then this signal is uh, C star G two, and then E of S equal to this model. So that's generally what you do, and then in the end you 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 combine everything, right? You find the uh, uh, ratio between this y star and the r star. That makes sense, right? That's what you need to do, right? So, uh, but there is a shortcut here, right? The shortcut is this. So what you do is, okay, um, you your first step, okay, step number one, okay, derive the uh, the derive the 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 trans function of the closed loop system uh, without any sampler. Okay, basically derive this continuous trans function. Okay, so derive the transfer function for continuous block. Okay, so that means just consider there's no sampler here, no sampler, right? So let's say if I derive the continuous one, what, what would that be? So that might be a challenge again. You say, well, so how do I derive the continuous one? Well, now remember this one here, right? Remember this one. When you don't have a sampler, what's the continuous one? It's G of S over 1 plus G of H, G H of S, right? So this G of S is the forward, it's the result of forward block, okay? And H of S is the the results combined results of the feedback block. So numerator is the forward block, and uh, denominator is the forward block multiplied by the feedback block. Okay. Yeah. So then, according to this one here, then what should be the pulse trans function? Yeah. One plus. What would be here? Sorry. H of S, G one of S, and T of S. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Good. So that's your step number one. Okay. Then your step two. Okay. You need to look, uh, take a little observation here. Okay. A little observation. So what you do is you you need to observe where this location of this impulse sampler is or R. So let's say I have an impulse sampler here, right? So any uh, block, okay. So basically any block that immediately follows a uh, impulse sampler, okay, you can change that to the Z corresponding component, okay? Yeah. So for example, huh? See this H of S that immediately okay, follows this, or there's an input sampler immediately in front of it. Okay, in front of it. So this H of S can be changed to H of Z. Right? That makes sense? Well, you know, how you tell you got H of Z? H of Z is this is is to replace that S in the H star of S, right? And where did you get H star of S? H star of S is when you get it when there's an input sampler in front of this H of S block. Okay? Yeah. So for this H of S you can change that here. Okay? Yeah. So let's see, I will write this down here. Okay. So if there is a okay impulse sampler There is an impulse sampler. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I should see the separating this as well. Yeah. Okay. Then 
change this S to Z. Okay, change the S to Z. So let's say make using the rule right here, right? Making U rule here. So that means my my H of S. So uh, you gotta be careful here, okay? I am saying as I'm gonna only change this H of S, okay? Only change this H of S to H of Z, but not this bottom one here, okay? Not bottom one here. So let's see. So basically, this H of S becomes H of Z there, okay? The bottom one here is a slightly different, okay? It's a slightly different issue because this there is a multiplication of H of S and the G1 of S here. Okay, multiplication of h of s g1 of s and if you look at this g h of s g1 of s here see there is no impulse sampler here right there's no impulse sampler here okay so in other words there's no impulse sampler separating these two blocks right separating this block so you cannot change this h of s g of g1 of s to h of z g1 of z so what do you have to do you have to combine these two together first. Okay. So these two together becomes G1 H or you call H G1 doesn't matter and change that to the Z block. Is that clear? Yeah. And now I can change the G2 to G of G2 of S to G of Z because why? Because this is separated. There's Stand alone here, right? Let's stand alone here. So that's G2 of Z here. Okay? Yeah. This is basically your Y of Z over R of Z. Okay? Yeah. So this is a shortcut, okay? Uh, but this shortcut is based on the correct uh, closed loop trans function, though, right? And also the, uh, the, the appropriate observation of the locations of the impulse sampler. Um, if the if you want to go through the process the steps like uh, what I showed here that's fine too and you should end up with the same results right actually I would encourage you what you, what I would encourage you to do is to verify these results by going through the process okay uh, the regular process okay and see if you can end up with the same thing right okay yeah any questions all good yeah. So there should be no, <coughs> no S's left in the function after the step at all. Exactly, no S's. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So that's a good question. Not just no S's. So the f actually, the first part you should say is every. So here is this one here, right? Or uh, we just say you know everything. First, everything is changed to start one. Okay. So basically, no mixture of star and S. Everything start. Right. See, this is what happens in we what we have here, right? First, we had a mix of a start and s, right? And then end, we end up everything is star one. Then we can change the s, right, to the z by appropriate substitution, uh, which is what? Where is that substitution? Which is this value, right? It's this value. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and of course, at the end, when you after you obtain the pulse trans function, which is Z, there shouldn't be any S in here, right? Yeah, that's definitely okay. You know what? Maybe you can try this one here just to use this uh, this technique. Let's see. How about this block here? So how about this one here? <coughs> what will be the pulse trans function? Yeah, just a couple minutes, just write it down there. So first, uh, first is the continuous, yeah. 
we were on the computer. That's right. Bottom is. Yeah, so now because why? Because everything's separated, right? Yeah. So you can just simply change every S block, uh, S, sorry, every S trans function to the Z one. So it's that simple, right? It's that simple. Uh, the next assignments, I think the next assignments, okay? When you do this, I, I really what you what, what I want is I still want to want you to try to go over the process with the star ones there, right? To go over the process, okay? And that's a sort of exercise of that thing. You should really verify uh, verify with um, this one here, because because this is kind of a sh sort of a shortcut, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so that that's basically wrap up with this uh, closed loop pulse trans function, right? So there's an example in the lecture. Uh, so take a look at that, and that's quite simple, right? So I'm gonna skip that example. And uh, if you understand, any questions? Okay, okay. So in reality, when you derive the pulse. Uh, the closed loop pulse trans function, right? If you look at this one here, right now I, I didn't give you specifically any uh, S function expressions, right? Yeah. So if you if you think about it, what would be involved in terms of deriving this one? You know, you have you need this technique for sure, uh, but you probably also need the tech the, your your technique is what your skills on in terms of how to do a proper Z transform, right? How to do a proper transform. So. You have the S block, you have the S trans function. How do you properly basically transform that to the S? All right, yeah. Because that's another issue you're going to need to practice. Okay, so now the next topic is discrete equivalent. Okay, discrete equivalent. So before we talk about discrete equivalent, I guess the wording sort of explains itself, right? So what does it mean? Basically, you want what you want is you want to get a discrete equivalent. So to finish the sentence to the continuous ones, okay, to the continuous one, okay, yeah. So that's basically what happens here. Now, where this thing from is it's it's like this, okay. So objective, right? So irrespective of what your objective, let's say your objective is design a digital controller, right? Okay, your, your objective is design a digital controller. So now the question is, how do we design a digital controller? Okay, now you're, you know that when you design your digital controller, you know, it's a discrete. So you probably say, I, 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 you know, I have to design my digital controller based on a discrete block, right? A Zap block. Right, so that's basically that's natural, right? Yeah. Now, however, mm, the 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 same question could be, okay, so here's my continuous system. Maybe I don't want to design a digital controller. Maybe uh, you know uh, somebody else has already designed a continuous block, right? You you, you design, say so you design a continuous controller in your uh, other courses already for the plant. Okay. So now you want to basically implement this continuous controller uh, using a microcontroller, right? Or using a, using a, uh, a digital computer, right? So that's basically another issue here. So then this is essentially uh, the idea here. here. Here is a digital controller. Let's see if I use a C of Z here to represent this one here. That's your ultimate uh, purpose here, right? Digital controller. Okay, that's what you really want, okay? Yeah. So one way, right, is you you did you design this one, right? You design this one based on a pure basically. How do I design this one? I design this one based on the pure, okay, a discrete z g of z, okay. I design based on this one here. Okay, you design based on this one here. So what is this one here? That one, okay, let's see, this is probably 
so-called discretized okay, plant. Okay, it's a discretized plant. Because when you design something, you know you you can design uh, you can you can compare it basically or in apple. So you, everything has to be in the same category first, right? You design it. So it has to be designed based on for a discrete plan. So of course, then where is the discrete plan from, right? The discrete plan from must be from your continuous plan, right? Must be from your continuous plan. So when you when you discretize from here to here, basically this is what you get here, right? This is the, the uh, discrete discretized process. A discretized process. So the question is, how do you discretize a, a continuous plant? So what would you do? How would you do to discretize a continuous plant? We, you actually have we already done it already. Mm -hmm. Sample it. Sample exactly. So, but you not just sample it, right? But you actually also need to what? You have you need to also have Exactly. You also need to have a zero order hole. So when you discretize this plan here, so what you can do is you can have a zero order hold and then you have this G of S, right? So that's the way you can discretize the continuous plant. Okay? That's why we are doing it, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is a sort of a the process here. So discretize and then it's designed based on digital to discretize the block right here, right? Okay, yeah, that's that's very good. And the other way is, so the guy saying is, you know, uh, I don't want to do this because why? You know why? Because based on this continuous block, I have already designed a beautiful continuous controller, right? You know, you in particularly in continuous system, there are so many techniques and uh, actually many uh, more approaches here in terms of designing continuous controller. So this is a continuous controller. So it really doesn't matter what kind of controller, maybe PID or maybe uh, some other type of a controller, right? But you did, you, you already had one. Okay? So you don't want to do any repetitive kind of work. So then what you do is maybe I can just discretize this guy here. Okay, discretize this continuous block to obtain this one here. Okay, so that's another approach here, right? That's an approach. So this approach here doesn't matter which approach, right? Whenever you see, 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 you see here, right? I mean, this approach has nothing to do with discretize. This one is just a design, right? This part is design, and this part is also design. Okay, but there are two branch here. One is discretize mean here, the other is discretizing here, right? Yeah. So whenever you say discretizing here, actually more precisely what you're what you're saying is you're trying to obtain a so called discrete equivalent to that block. Okay, that's what happens here. So you're trying to obtain a block here which is the discrete and catches the characteristic of this block. Okay. You're trying to obtain a block here, and that's also discrete, the difference equation that can still represent, okay, or reflect the characteristic of this continuous block. Does that matter, right? Yeah. So, for example, you know, I'll, I'll show you I'll, an example. Let's say you have an integral, right? You have an integral. And then you have this integral in the continuous block is 1 over s, right? It's 1 over s. So, you know, you, what does the integral do? You basically integrate uh, the, uh, uh, the input. Okay, or you're trying to get area underneath the curve, right? Okay. So then you say, okay, I'm trying to obtain a digital a component. Okay, has the same function as this integral, right? So that's the discretized process. So how would you get that okay, properly, right? That's the uh, what we're going to talk about this discrete equivalent here. Okay, yeah. Is that clear? Okay. So before we talk about the dis discretizing, uh, discrete equivalent thing in here, uh, I think I want to mention uh, one little fact or phenomena. Okay, one little fact or phenomena here. Right? Yeah. So <clears throat> when you go over this branch here, okay, when you go over this branch, 
and you're trying to, you're trying to obtain a zero order hold, or in other words, you have a zero order hold. You put a zero order hold in front of this uh, planet here, okay? And then out of these two blocks here, you're trying to get a G of Z, for example, okay? Yeah. Now, it's not like you don't change anything by inserting the zero order hold here, okay? So, uh, as a matter of fact, when you have an additional block which is zero order hold here something changes actually, right? Something changes. So one of the changes that can be very easily explained by this curve right here, right? Zero hold. So let's see, right? Uh, what, what's the effect of a zero order hold? So let's say this is a continuous signal, sinusoidal, <coughs> right? Sinusoidal. So then you sample the sinusoidal, right? You sample it. And you sample it, and then you pass to zero hold, basically the holds, right? That's basically the the what's come out of this zero order hold, Is that right? Yeah. Huh? So then, if you if you connect basically if you take the average, okay, take the average of this zero order hold at here, right? If you connect this average here, so you end up with this another sinusoidal here, right? Another sinusoidal. That makes sense. Right. If you compare these two sinusoidal here, shifted. <coughs> so more precisely, the green one is what? It's delayed. it's delayed. So it's delayed by how much then? So if we're taking average basically means what's the this one here? This is how much? T. Uh, and that we're by how much? Exactly. It's the green one, which is the the one out of this zero order hold it's delayed by t over two right compared to your original one there okay yeah so that's the basically uh actually that's a shortcoming of this zero order hold okay it's simple to implement but at the same time the zero order hold adds a delay of t over two to the system okay so zero order hold adds a t over 2 delay okay, to the system. Okay, so now you might think, so what, what, what does, why does it matter? You know, why, why, why as a delay, uh, you know, uh, it's bad? Delay is bad. So when you have a delay, right, essentially, basically, in terms of the, the frequency response, right, that means what? That, that means there's a phase change. There's a phase delay. Okay, there's a phase delay. As a control engineer, actually, often in time, everything, particularly when you design in a continuous system, most of the time what you care about is what is the phase margin in the system? Phase margin, right? And you learn, did you learn this concept in continuous system? Yeah. Phase margin is essentially it's a margin that tells you how stable the system would be, you know, when you increase your gains. So your gain, you cannot increase your gain infinitely, right? When you increase your gain, let's say from one to ten to to two hundred, right? Certain that level, the system becomes unstable, right? Becomes unstable. But if the system has a pretty big phase margin, right, and uh, you have a large, basically, region to to tune it to change the gains, okay? But if the system is very has very very small phase margin then all you have is just a very, very small region to tune the gains, you know, from one to two, you know, that's it, right? Over that and then it's unstable, right? That's the phase margin. But when you have a delay in the system, it reduces that phase margin, okay? Reduce that margin, yeah. And that's basically the bad side of this uh, zero order hold, right? Yeah. So in other words, actually, uh, that actually basically, uh, there's a little thing you, when you design control system, uh, you you got to what you got to be careful is. Let's say uh, you design this is what you want. This is what you're trying to discretize. And the previous layer, what you do is you are trying to design a C of S, okay, based on this G of S, right? Maybe you're trying to design this based on this one here, okay? And uh, when you're in a continuous system, there's no zero order hold, so you design this one based on certain specification. And I actually designed this one maybe based on certain face margin system, maybe 30 degree or maybe 40 degree face margin, right? Yeah. But however, once 
you discretize that, you introduce the error hold, it decrease this face margin, it, it, it introduce the delay, then when you design this continuous controller, okay, and you then continue controller, if you know that you're gonna, what you're gonna do is you're gonna discretize the, the C of S into C of that. If you know that you're gonna discretize this into this one here, then when you do that, you have to, 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 to keep in mind that the, the delay, this zero order hold introduces. Am I make, am I clear? Yeah. Wes. Given the sampling time that you can get, very short sampling time, is this really a real concern? It is. Well, not all system has a very, very short sampling time. You know what I'm saying? So for example, uh, maybe uh, you're controlling a process of drying uh, wood or, uh, or something, right? You know what, that sampling time is very long, actually maybe 20 seconds or, or even longer. Yeah. Some process has pretty long sampling time. Yeah. But for robotics, maybe just 0 0.001 minutes, uh, 0 0.001 seconds, 1 milliseconds, like that, right? That's pretty small, yeah. So the effect of this one here may not be, uh, the delay effect may not be as uh, uh, phenomenal in some process and another one, right? But that's, that's something you need to keep in mind, basically. Okay, yeah. Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, just just bear in mind of this effect here, right? It's actually nothing to do with the discrete equivalent. So let's take a look now the discrete equivalent thing here. Okay, yeah, discrete equivalent. So what I'm going to do is, um, as as we said, so approach one, as I said, approach one is this, right? It's a zero h, and then g of s. Okay, so that's basically one way we're doing it, right? That's one way of doing it. This is your g of z here, right? Yeah. And the other approach, and for this particular approach, so what you need usually what you do is you 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 apply this approach in terms of discretize the plant. Okay. So this is basically mostly used to discretize the plant. Okay, the plant. And uh, the next thing here, what you can do is, in general, let's say I still call it approach two, but um, in approach two, there are a number of uh, different ways of doing this. But in this approach here, uh, what would I call it? I would call it a numerical approach, basically. Okay? So numerically, okay, let's call it numerical approach. Okay, numerical approach. So for numerical approach, this approach in general is used to discretize the continuous controller. Okay, discretize the continuous controller. So the second approach is mostly used on discretize the continuous controller. <coughs> So numerical approach, this is a very general topic, then there are essentially there are so many different numerical techniques, right? Uh, what we're gonna use is we're gonna introduce the simple ones here. So number one, we're gonna look at this so-called trapezoid. Okay. And then we're gonna also look at uh, two other things. One is called forward uh, difference, the other is called uh, backward difference. Okay, so let's take a look at the trap the trapezoid uh, approximation. So the trapezoid approximation is also called testing, okay? So testing's approximation. Okay. So now you probably say, why are you changing the word to approximation? Yes, it's up approximation. So whenever you use a numerical approach, you learn numerical analysis, you don't get exactly the same thing, right? It's approximation, okay? It's an approximation here. So what do we mean by trapezoid here? So this is what happens, right? So let's let's use an integral an example here. Let's say I have an integral, okay, zero to t, and integrating, okay, and a certain error, right? This integral here, okay, and that's like a, a PID control the i part integral part, right? The integral part. So now what we will do is, how do I obtain a discrete Okay, equivalent for this one here. And we know that, well, let's say you can 
consider this okay, as a block like this. Okay, so you pass this e of t to an integral in s block, it's 1 over s, and uh, the transfer function is y of s over e of s, which is 1 over s, right? It's 1 over s. Okay, yeah. So, numerical approach to do this is uh, if I draw the diagram, okay, if I draw a curve, so maybe this is e of t. Right? Maybe this is e of t here. So then you're integrating this e of t, let's say, up to here. Okay? Up to somewhere here. Then the area underneath this one is the y of t, right? The y of t. So basically, what we want is we want to find an approximation approach that gives me approximately the, the area underneath the curve. That make sense? Yeah. So once you, then there are different ways of doing that, right? And this trapezoid is one way of doing this right here. Okay. So what you can do is here's one sampling time, there's two t, and then up to maybe k t minus t and k t like this. And this is the value, corresponding value, okay, at each moment, okay, at each moment, okay, sampling, right? Then the trapezoid is this. You connect, okay, this basically. Well, not not the middle one here. The middle one is there's supposed to be more there. Okay, you connect like that. So if you look at each one of these, what are they? They are basically a so-called trapezoid, right? Each one of them is a trapezoid. Okay, not a rectangle, huh? It's the trapezoid. Yeah. Okay. The shape of each one, or the shape formed by two adjacent sampling moments, is a trapezoid. It's a trapezoid. So then, I'm looking for the area underneath this guy here, right? Underneath this one here. So well, what I'm going to have here is what's the area? This is the area here. Then let's say we're looking for okay the area at t equal to kt moment for example okay we're looking for the area at t equal to kt moment okay then based on this integral here right based on this integral that integral is 0 to kt right 0 to kt okay integral 0 to kt but what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the integral to two parts. Okay, to two parts. That's good, right? You know, it's basically uh, separating the integral piecewise. That's fine, right? Yeah. And for the first integral, right? First integral is zero to kt minus capital T. So if y of kt represents the area underneath the curve at the t equal to kt, then this is going to be what? Right? It's going to be this. Okay? It's going to be this. Okay. Yeah. And then this one here is the area from kt minus t to kt. Okay, t minus t to kt. So basically, it's the area underneath which part? Underneath this part of the curve, right? Underneath this part of the curve. And uh, the way that we want to approximate this is we you want to use the trapezoid to approximate this one here, right? Approximate this. So what's the area of this trapezoid? Formula for area of trapezoid is the this side plus this side. Yeah, multiplied by this height, then divided by two, right? Divided by two. So this area will be this plus this multiplied by the height. Height is what? This t, right? t. And divided by 2. So what will be this height? This height is e kt minus t. And this height is e kt, right? e kt. So then that's basically e 
uh, not minus. What did I say? Minus. Right? It's a plus, right? Plus. So so e k t minus t plus e k t okay, divided by two multiplied by this height t. Okay. Height t. See. If I write it in here. See, that's it. So this is a difference equation, right? This is a difference equation. Now you, you don't see any integral anymore, right? This is a difference equation. And this difference equation is the equation to approximate which one? To approximate this integral, right? Okay, yeah. So we don't really need this difference equation. We want a similar ones like a pulse transformation for this one here. So what do we do? We take Z transform of both sides of this equation. And this side here is y, so that's y of z, right? y of z. And this is a delayed one, so this will be, that's right. And here is delayed. Okay, yeah. So what do we need? We need the ratio between this and this, right? The ratio between y of z and a. And you basically what you do is move this together, combine it together, you know, and move around everything. Right? Find this expression is describing this ratio, and uh, you can easily find that, which is okay, which is this. Is that process clear? Yeah. Is the denominator supposed to be e of z over there? Or this one? Uh, the right side. No, right side. I mean, it's like the yeah. right mm -hmm. side of the page. Right. right. Oh, here. Yeah, the denominator. Is that supposed to be e of z or is this z? Oh, here is a 2. Oh, it's 2. That's 2. Yeah. So basically, we're, we're, we're talking about the area of this, right? Area of a trapezoid, yeah. And this side is E K T minus T and E K T. And this side is T. Yeah. Okay, so that's basically, this This is approximation of the of which one? Of the integral. So this basically, what, what does this do is, this one over S, Right. Originally, the S block is 1 over S. Now it's going to be approximated by this one. Okay, by this one. That's testing's approximation. Okay, that's testing. Yeah. So in other words, you know, uh, if you use Simulink, right? You know, you you draw you you drag a block. S block, which let's say S over one, right? In the in the design, and now you see I'm going to design a digital controller. Instead of dragging a block one over S, you can you can drag a Z block and then put that Z block specifically this one here. <coughs> so that's supposed to do the same thing as this one over S. So what does it do? It does integral, right? It'll do the integral or integration. Is that clear? Yeah. So that's testing, right? That's testing. And uh, the other two are actually kind of simple. One is is called so when I know it's simple here, testing. The other two, one is called forward difference and a backward difference. So I'm not going to go to detail, but so all all the the difference here is this the difference forward difference basically it's a matter of how you approximate the area underneath the curve. Forward difference is this. So here is k t minus t. Here is k t, and this is t two t for example, right? Yeah. So how do you approximate the areas? So for forward difference. Here is the value at the kt minus t, right? Here's the value at kt minus t. Then you 
you draw a horizontal line up to this KT moment, okay, up to here. So this line doesn't necessarily intersect this original curve, okay? Original curve, this is E of T. See, that's, that's called a forward, okay? It's forward difference, okay? Yeah. And uh, in this, in the, if I do this one here, so from here to T, right, to T here, and then from T to 2T, right, to 2T, okay? And then the area will be this rectangle's area plus this rectangle's area plus this rectangle's area, right, until the end, right? That's the, air, uh, the way to approach the area, okay? Yeah. And the backward difference, so I think now you probably get an idea backward now, right? So backward will be what? So backward it would be, instead of drawing a line here, you draw a KT up to here, right? KT up to here. And then draw a horizontal line up to back to here. Or here's this, and you draw a line horizontal back here, you know, like this. Okay, that's called backward difference. Okay, yeah. And it'll slightly change this, uh, the transfer function here. For example, for forward difference, then if I if I if I do the same approach here, then y of k t, so y of k t is the area up to this moment, okay, up to this k t moment. That should equal to y of k t minus t, basically uh, anywhere here, plus what? Plus the area at this location. And that this location is T multiplied by uh, E, right? By E K T minus T, right? This is E K T minus T. So that's the forward difference. And for this one here, it'll be Y of K T, Y of K T minus T plus what? Plus T this time. E K T, right? E K T. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if I take Z transform of both sides here, so what do we have? We have Y of Z here, Z here, and T E Z, right? Yeah. And here. Use it. Okay. So that gives me the, for the first forward difference, give us the ratio y over z over e of z equal this t over z minus one. And here, and that's Z T over Z minus one. Okay? Yeah. So this is basically three different ways of uh, doing this discrete equivalent. And that's equivalent to one over S here, equivalent to one over S here. Okay? Yeah. And uh, we'll stop here, and uh, we can finish this uh, in the uh, next lecture. Okay? Yeah. So we'll introduce the PID, discretized PID. You actually will be able to. Uh, this is going to be the first. Here, right? Yeah. Any questions? Okay.